While rereading Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Friedrich Nietzsche, I came across a passage that made me reflect on the prevalence of envy in our society. Zarathustra said, I know the hatred and envy of your heart. You are not great enough not to know hatred and envy. So be great enough not to be ashamed of them. So I asked myself, what are we doing with our envy? Are we hiding it from ourselves and the world? Or are we fooling ourselves into thinking that we're too great to feel it? Envy is a multifaceted and complex feeling that can be difficult to grasp. It is commonly considered as an unreasonable, irrational and vicious feeling. That's why it is rarely talked about and is often repressed. It is an essential human emotion that could be a double-edged sword. It can have both positive and negative effects on an individual's life. When harnessed positively, Envy can inspire us to work harder and strive for success. However, when left unchecked, envy can fester and consume a person, ultimately leading to negative consequences in their personal and professional lives. The majority of the philosophical literature addressing envy considers it to be a destructive emotion that should be eradicated from our lives. From Thomas Aquinas to Friedrich Nietzsche, they all agreed that envy is a disease that destroys everyone involved, the envied and the envier. However, it is not that simple. We all likely experience envy from time to time, and by simply vilifying it, we make it much harder for ourselves to understand it and regulate it. This leads to a tendency to want to repress it, to not associate ourselves with such negative emotion. And as you know, this is extremely counterproductive. So in this video, I aim to explain precisely what envy is, how it impacts our lives, and how it can be transformed into a positive life force. Envy is a propensity to view the well-being of others with distress, even though it does not detract from one's own. It is a reluctance to see our own well-being overshadowed by another's because the standard we use to see how well off we are is not the intrinsic worth of our own well-being, but how it compares with that of others. Envy aims at least in terms of one's wishes, at destroying others' good fortune. Immanuel Kant, The Metaphysics of Morals. Envy is a complex emotion characterized by feelings of inferiority, rivalry, and a strong desire to possess or attain what others have. It involves a social comparison process where people evaluate their worth based on the achievements and possessions of others. To feel envious, three conditions need to be met. First, we must be confronted with a person that has something we don't have. Second, we must desire that thing for ourselves. And third, we must be pained by this feeling of lack. Envy is quite different from indignation and jealousy. Indignation arises from the feeling of unfair treatment. So it pertains to justice. It happens when we see a person that we consider undeserving with something that we perceive as good. Whereas jealousy stems from the fear of losing something we already possess to someone else, be it a title, a possession, or a person. Now that the difference is clear, let's explore the types of envy. Envy could be separated into two categories benign envy and invidious envy. They're both focused on competition with the rival, but not with the same intention. Invidious envy involves a desire for the rival to lose the good, whereas benign envy does not. The objective of this distinction is to identify a case in which envy is not only justifiable, but could be transformed into something positive. And in that case, it is benign envy. Research claimed that benign envy is not only healthy, but could also have positive effects in our lives. Think of it as having a role model or someone you look up to. This is like holding yourself to a higher standard, a higher standard that you would like to achieve. And this dynamic is inspired from the possessions or the attainment of another person. So the whole dynamic is completely healthy and pushes us towards self-improvement and transformation. However, invidious envy is completely different. It would lead to feelings of hatred and bitterness and content, whereas benign envy wouldn't or shouldn't lead to that negative way or to these negative feelings. And this distinction is crucial for us to understand which category our envy belongs to. 
if it's benign envy, then we shouldn't be worried or ashamed from it or even try to repress it because it's healthy and it doesn't really pertain any negative feelings towards anyone. However, if it's invidious envy, we should identify it and better understand it to ideally transform it into benign envy. And this is exactly what we'll try to do and we'll try to explain in the rest of the video. Envy can only be understood when examined in the context of society. It is not a solitary phenomenon, but rather arises from the comparison of oneself to others. And this is exactly what was suggested by the American psychologist Leon Festinger in 1958 with the social comparison theory. Festinger suggests that people value their own personal and social worth by assessing how they compare to others. He believed that we engage in this comparison process as a way of establishing a benchmark for ourselves. And this aims to provide us with an accurate evaluation for ourselves. These evaluations could be in terms of looks, achievements, or social status. He identified two possibilities of comparison. The first is upward social comparison. And it takes place when we compare ourselves with those who we believe are better than us. These upward comparisons often focus on the desire to improve our current status or level of ability. The other one is downward social comparison, which takes place when we compare ourselves to others who are worse off than us. Such downward comparisons are often centered on making ourselves feel better about our abilities or traits. It is ingrained in human nature to compare ourselves with others to establish a hierarchy. This basic drive is present in all of us to determine our position in society. Though we might not always be conscious of such comparisons, they are constantly happening. It is a way of assessing oneself and identifying where we stand in relation to the group. When done correctly, a healthy comparison can be an excellent measure of our progress and even serve as a motivator for success. Comparing ourselves to our peers can help us determine whether we are on the right track or not. Although the idea of the right track is clearly subjective, the comparison could still give us some insights and guidance. According to these findings, we can make a first conclusion. The only beneficial form of envy is benign envy coupled with the upward social comparison process. This is considered as the healthiest version of this often demonized emotion. The main problem of this comparison is that when it's not acknowledged and well managed, it leads to bitterness and contempt. This problem is exacerbated today with the prevalence of social media. In traditional societies, the comparison is mainly between people in the same local community, whereas in more individualistic and modern societies, the comparison is open to the whole world. If we spend most of our time browsing social media, then everything we see could be a potential source of comparison. When people say that social media is bad for mental health, they mainly refer to the anxiety caused by endless comparison. A 2020 online survey study in Singapore tested the pathway that linked Instagram to social anxiety. The findings demonstrated that using Instagram would not directly increase social anxiety, but would instead affect social comparison and self-esteem. The feeling of inferiority that stems from constantly comparing ourselves is exactly what makes us envious. Envy develops when it always looks like the grass is greener on the other side. After all, if all we see is success, then it feels like it's happening to everyone except us. This makes people bitter and hostile, and it can even discourage them from pursuing their dreams because they only see the results and not the process. The envy that stems from social media creates another problem. It fosters uniformity and suppresses authenticity. Social media is a uniformity machine. It makes us want what other people have, not what we really want. By constantly seeing things perceived as valuable, we will end up perceiving them the same way. This idea is perfectly reflected in the 20th century French anthropologist's work, René Girard. He developed the concept of mimetic theory, which states that human desire is not individual, but collective and social. He suggests that our desires don't come from within, but rather from a social observation process. After the satisfaction of fundamental needs such as food, safety or shelter, we enter into the realm of desire where we lack complete biological instinct to guide us. Instead, 
The source of guidance becomes other people, and this leads to the tendency of aligning our desires with those of society. He believed that we will only put an effort to pursue a goal if society perceives it as valuable. This ultimately leads to conflict since people would all be striving for the same valuable goals. And this conflict begins with envy. If we all desire the same things, then the ones who don't obtain them will inevitably envy those who do. This not only fosters unhealthy competition, but also undermines our authenticity. By continuously imitating the desires of society, we end up by erasing our own. And with time, this limits the creative pursuits of society and hinders social progress. After examining the main reasons that could cause envy, one might ask, how can we stop being envious? Or more realistically, how can we turn it into something positive? To overcome envy, we must understand the subtle difference between envy and emulation. In rhetoric, Aristotle contrasted envy with emulation, which he saw as a more positive and virtuous feeling. In Aristotle's view, emulation involves admiring someone's good qualities and successes and being motivated to achieve similar excellence without any resentment. When we know that it's possible for us to obtain the desired object, we emulate. When we know that we can't, we envy. And this is an indication of self-esteem. To transform envy into emulation, we must know what we want and we must have a clear goal in mind. Only then can we get inspired by the people who took the same path and succeeded. However, if we don't have any goals or direction in life, our envy can help. Acknowledging envy could lead to crucial discoveries about ourselves. By being fully honest with ourselves, we understand what drives us, what we look up to, and even how we indirectly perceive ourselves. This already gives us a lot of material to work with. By analyzing the people we envy, we can get a clear hint of our intrinsic goals and value structure. This also gives us a clear hint on where we position ourselves in relation to these goals. There is always an underlying reason for envy, and it should be our task to discover it. However, Envy is often easier to notice in others than in ourselves. When we feel envious, we need to examine whether we resent someone for doing something wrong or if we simply desire what they have. It's important to focus on ourselves and acknowledge if our actions are driven by envy. Assessing someone's success can be challenging as our egos are always trying to justify our beliefs. I think this reflective exercise is extremely powerful and has the potential to uncover important insights about ourselves. Be honest with yourself. Recognize when others are better than you and use it as a motivation to learn and improve. Don't compare yourself in a way that fosters envy. Instead, learn from others' achievement, reflect on what you admire about them, and use it to improve yourself. According to Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, protecting our self-esteem by lying or repressing negative emotions is a harmful long-term strategy. When one tries desperately to be good and wonderful and perfect, then all the more the shadow develops a definite will to be black and evil and destructive. Jung's quote speaks to the concept of the shadow a term he used to describe the unconscious and repressed aspect of our personalities. In simpler terms, the code suggests that when someone intensely strives to project an image of perfection, the suppressed and darker aspects of their nature are more likely to assert themselves in opposition. This happens because the unconscious mind rebels against the pressure to conform to unrealistic standards. This shows the importance of introspection and a genuine internal dialogue which are crucial for self-transformation. These should be accompanied by the right actions and the right mindset to completely transform our envy. The right action would be to set personal goals. Instead of wanting to possess what someone else has, we should aim to achieve similar success in our own authentic way. We should strive to achieve what we truly desire and not what is socially desired. This is the best way to eradicate envy. If everything you desire is personal and authentic, then your only focus would be to improve yourself and not envy others. The right mindset would be being mindful of our accomplishments and not let other people's success overshadow ours. Gratitude helps shift the focus from what we lack to what we've accomplished. We should regularly reflect on our successes, strength, and the opportunities we've had. As Epicurus said, do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. 
To finish, the most important thing is to understand that success is not a zero-sum game. That means that others' achievements do not detract from our own potential success. We should strive to develop a mindset that genuinely celebrates the success of others to create a positive environment. Success is not bound by a specific timeline. If you have a clear vision and put in the work, your time will come. As the 20th century English philosopher Bertrand Russell wrote, beggars do not envy millionaires, though of course they will envy other beggars who are more successful. The academic consensus is that human beings have a natural tendency to compare themselves with others who are similar to them. The more similar we are to someone, the more inclined we are to engage in comparisons as it provides us with a relevant benchmark. To avoid falling in this trap, we should strive to become so unique that all comparisons are irrelevant. This can be achieved by focusing on our strength, developing our individuality, and only pursuing our true passions. This will make us create our own blueprint of success, and thus the only relevant comparison would be the person you were yesterday. I guarantee you that this mindset will transform your envy into emulation and your emulation into success. I'm interested to know if you've ever discovered anything about yourself by analyzing your envy. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.